So I'd like to welcome everyone to the Port United meeting of the Seventh Council and Municipality of South Dundas on Tuesday, May 19th. The weather is finally starting to warm a bit, a little chit and dip, but uh, it seems like we've turned the corner and summer's around the corner. I know that uh, we're living interesting times and uh, hopefully the new events of trying to open Ontario and Canada up uh, turn out better than expected. Let's go for a roll call, Madam Clerk, please. Mayor Bivalves. Here. Deputy Mayor Gardner. Here. Councillor Lewis. Here. Councillor Mellon. Here. Sir Wells. Here. CEO Garrity. Here. Treasurer McMillan. Here. Deputy Treasurer Mason. Here. Deputy Clerk Robert. Ethan's there. Ethan? Here. Here. Director of Transportation Hyman. Here. Chief Building Official Lowy. Here. Rec Programmer Scott. Here. And Clerk Front. Present. Okay. Thank you. So confirmation of agenda this evening. Um, I have asked the poll uh, some items out of consent, which were C, F, and H, and I have them placed as H, I, and J under discussion, respectively. Anything further? Deputy Mayor Gardner, please. Yes, if possible, for discussion, I'd like to add the uh, pool bylaw. Second, I'll write that down. Anything else from any other member of council at this time? No. Okay. Any disclosure or pecuniary interest in general nature thereof? No, I will be declaring a conflict on the TA Weaver drain this evening um, due to the fact that I'm a shareholder of uh, Bycrest Farms Limited, who is the major landowner in the watershed. That is bylaw 2020-27. I have filled out the proper form and will forward that to the clerk when I get a chance. Okay, seeing no more, the adoption of minutes, please. So moved by Deputy Mayor Gardner. Second by Councillor Lewis that the minutes of the 48th regular and in camera meeting of the Council of the Municipality of South Dundas be adopted as circulated. Any discussion, issues? Seeing none, I'll call the vote then, please. Mayor Bivell? Yes. Deputy Mayor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Mr. Mellon? Yes. Councilor Wells. Yes. Motion carries. Move on. Uh, we have no delegation petitions this evening again. We'll go down to action requests. The first one is RF 2020-02, Air Quad Beach House cladding options. Moved by Councilor Mellon, second by Councilor Lewis at the Council of the Municipality of South Dundas accept report RF 2020-02 to award the cladding of the Air Quad Beach House to J&M Contracting Corporation with a price of $12,422.11 plus HST for metal siding. Amy, please. Mr. Mayor, Deputy Mayor, Councillors. Uh, in February 2020, the Iroquois Beach House vandal was vandalized. Uh, the paint used in the act of vandalism uh, was applied directly to the Beach House's porous brick. Uh, staff had a contractor try to remove the paint, um, but that the attempts were unsuccessful. To cover up the vandalism, uh, the Iroquois Waterfront Committee suggested the building be cladding in a siding similar to our waterfront facilities like the Iroquois Campground building. So based on those recommendations, staff, the Iroquois Waterfront, or staff moved forward with receiving quotes uh, on a canix of a siding that is similar to the, it's the same siding as the Iroquois campground building. After discussions with Councillor Wells, it was recommended that the staff try an alternate type of siding made from steel. Uh, 
staff followed the recommendation, sought a second set of quotes for the for the steel siding. Images of the steel siding are suggested down in the on the report. Staff noted that both types of cladding come in similar colors and that were utilized for the campground building to provide a uniform look for the waterfront. So staff is looking for any for recommendations on accepting this contract for the steel sliding siding. Thank you. Comments, questions, concerns. Deputy Mayor Gardner, please. Thanks, Mayor Bybelt. Um, just a, a quick question, and it's not reflective of the work, but uh, what was the thought process as far as trying to paint over the graffiti? To paint over to cover the graffiti itself. Yeah. Um, you can yeah. paint it, and then there would be staff could do it every, I think it's, I believe it says in here, uh, you could do it. It'd be an annual retouch um, just to cover up uh, the graffiti itself, just to repaint it. Uh, yeah. it it'd be a lower cost. I see. I see that in the report, and I I understand making it uh, functional as well as uh, looking good down there. Um, I just with the uh, metal siding that suggested, um, there's absolutely no paint that will stick to that. Uh, paint would stick to that. Um, the only su suggestion that we do with cladding is that it'll stop the rainfall from soaking into the brick. Um, it would stop all of that so we don't get any more mold on the inside of the uh, of the building itself. So that siding that siding would protect that from that from the uh, from the elements. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Council Lewis. Please <clears throat> just to touch on uh, what uh, Deputy Mayor Gardner said, the stone that is on uh, the uh, Building there is a very soft stone, and uh, I know we had graffiti whenever I was there, and we had a guy come in with a steam X machine, and it pitted the stone. So uh, I would recommend not painting and, and to go ahead with the clad siding. Uh, it most likely save a lot of aggravation and a lot of headaches. Thank you. Councilman Allen, please. Thank you, Mayor Bybells. Uh, no, I can go with this quote. Uh, in your report, uh, Jamie, you would, the repainting was a 10 to 12,000. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's just too, well, it, it doesn't really matter because I don't think that's the way to go. Uh, I think we need to go with the, the metal cladding um, 12, 4, 22, and 11. Uh, I'm uh, I'm good with it. Um, well, as likely as I said about the the steel, uh, the reason I I I'm going to go with the steel, but uh, Mayor Byville, do you want me to enlighten Council about the reason I changed from siding, or just are we good? No, I, I think, I think uh, Jamie has given us a re his reason. So, unless you want to, it's your call. No, no, no I'm, uh, and the reason uh, getting back to the actually the beach house was a, like a split face block. And at the time, it was a bad batch of blocks that were uh, produced. So, over the years, as everyone knows, the mold and everything comes in. This will that'll put an end to it. Uh, we can uh, the mold on the inside. Go, and it's a lot easier to fix this if something ever goes wrong, uh, because it's a known place for uh, graffiti. So basically, you you take a sheet off, uh, put a sheet back on, or you where the can excel being a dual it's not just one color it's a, a mixture of colors if uh, anyone looks at the siding up at the campground building so uh, definitely a good choice to go with the uh, ideal canadiana and that will solve all the problems thank you okay i i do have 
Those who aren't speaking, please put your microphones on mute, please, because the background noise is bad. Thank you. Um, Jamie, a couple of questions. Um, the color of the, the siding, did you consult with uh, any members of the Waterfront Committee on that? We received an email saying they would like to match the color of our facilities down there. Um, being the campground, being that type of color, I was matching it with that color of the Iroquois campground building. Okay, so um, Margaret Lee is on that committee and she's been commissioned by that committee to um, deal with the color. She's a, a designer by trade, so uh, um, I would ask that you reach out to her to, to come up with the correct color and make sure everything is right before it is ordered. Um, and if you need her her contacts, I do have them. Okay. And the other thing that I mentioned was about budget. So um, my understanding of the budgeting for this was that South Dundas was paying for this and wasn't coming out of the committee's usable funds. Is that still correct? Correct. Okay, that's that's it for me then. We are in talks, oh, sorry, yeah. we are in talks with um, uh, with Constable, Constable Anderson as to try to find the culprit of this. Uh, I haven't received anything back from him. This was before COVID, um, but I am trying to get a hold of him and to discuss if he has any contact with uh, the person involved with graffitiing it. So. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Sarah? So in the budget right now for Iroquois um, Waterfront Repairs and Maintenance, there's only $3,500. So this is exceeding what's budgeted. Um, so council could decide just to leave it, go to the bottom line, or, um, if they want to access parkland funds, that's another option. Um, if we, and then I guess the Iroquois waterfront, they were allocated the $30,000 for this year. So if council doesn't want to touch that, that's, that's fine as well, but that's where we're at for financing. Okay. Well, that was the understanding commitment I gave the committee when I went to their meeting. So we. It, maybe in the end they won't be spending their money, but uh, um, we were committed to fixing that problem up for them. Okay. And it kind of does well because the cladding will deal with the water infiltration at the same time, which has been a major sore point for that beach house since uh, since probably it's been built. And so once this is done and they get it dried out and the mold cleaned up, it'll be uh, a lot better. So in the end, we'll have a better uh, asset. Councilor Wells, please. You have to unmute to your mic, please, Lloyd. Thank you. Just a little further uh, information. For the colors of the KAN, if, if anyone needs to see it, there's two types of gray. Uh, I can, I have a color chart if they, uh, if the waterfront committee wants to see it. Uh, uh, there's there's one gray that's actually pretty close to the campground building. I would recommend, but that's totally up to them what they would like. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anything further? Um, yeah, uh, Mayor Bybels, if I can. Um, to uh, do we have um, any type of um, security camera down there uh, to possibly you know? <laughs> The young youths of the neighborhood decide they want to paint up again. We might be able to, you know, prevent this. Is there a is there a beach camera down there, or a security camera at all? No, there is not. There, there um, Councillor Mellon, uh, the chair of the committee, uh, Mr. Ross, has been looking into it, so he um, he may come up with a solution for that yet. Good. Okay. Thank you, Mayor Bibles. Anything else? If not, I'll call the vote, please. Mayor Byveld? Yes. Deputy Mayor Gardner? Yes. Councilor Lewis? Yes. Councilor Mellon? Yes. Councilor Wells? Unmute, please, Councilor Wells. Thank you. Yes. Sorry. Motion carries. Thank you. 
Next one is TS 2020-04, the RTF number TS 20-09, sidewalk replacement and repair. Moved by Councillor Wells, second by Deputy Mayor Gardner, that the Council of the Municipality of South Dundas accept report number TS 20-04 to award the tender for the sidewalk replacement and repair to Strata Construction Group, Inc. in the amount of $150,522 plus HST. Yeah, welcome. Thank you, Mayor and Council. In front of you, you'll find the uh, the results of the RFT that uh, the municipality uh, put out to gain pricing for the sidewalk replacement in Morrisburg. This is year two of four, which was presented to Council last year. Uh, the streets identified this year will be Fifth Street from Ottawa, from, uh, Ottawa Street to Laurier, and then from Laurier back to Pilot Way. Um, you'll note in my discussions that I have, or the municipality has not worked with Strata Construction Group in the past. However, I did follow up with some references given, and they all came back with uh, nothing but praise. Uh, clean work site, always punctual, uh, attention to detail were some of the key issues uh, or key points that were made when speaking with the two groups, uh, uh, companies, which I called. So I'm more now welcome to uh, answer questions at this time. Okay, thank you, Council Wells. Any comments, questions, concerns? Uh, no, Mayor Mayor Bygles, I'm I'm good. It's a good price, and if uh, Jeff says the company's reliable, I'm I'm good with that. Council Mellon, please. Uh, no, um, I'm Jeff. Just keep an oversight on them. Uh, I realize we haven't worked with them before, and uh, everybody's saying they're good. But anyway, no carry on. Council Lewis. No, no questions. Just uh, glad to see we're going on with our second year of uh, sidewalks. Thanks, Mayor Vivelds. Nope, no issues. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, there's nothing further. I'll call for the vote, please. Mayor Vivelds. Yes. Yes. Councillor Lewis. Yes. Councillor Mellon. Yes. Councillor Wells. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Next one is TS 2020 05, RFQ number TS 20 14, Asphalt Hot Box. Moved by Councillor Lewis, second by Councillor Mellon, that the Council of the Municipality of South Dundas accept report number TS 2020 05 to award the tender for the purchase of a two ton trailer mounted portable asphalt hot box to Marathon Equipment, Inc. in the amount of $37,145.50 plus HST. Jeff, again, please. Thank you, Mayor and Council. In front of you, you'll find the results of the hot box. Um, this was talked about during our 2020 budget uh, presented to Council. Um, this will be a much needed piece of machinery that we can use when it comes to asphalt repairs. And also in the winter time, when it comes to uh, repairing potholes, we'll be able to keep the hot mix or the coal patch warm or at least warmer and make it workable. Um, so that we're not throwing chunks in the holes. We're actually throwing asphalt where asphalt needs to be put. So um, if you have any questions, I'll be more than welcome to answer them. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Gardner. Thanks, Mayor Bivelts. No issues, Jeff. Council Lewis. No, no questions. Council Mellon. Uh, no, uh, I'm glad to see uh, there was what six uh, different bids bidders on this, and I guess my only um, question would be, Jeff, uh, they were bidding. We're, all, we're comparing apples to apples. Basically, uh, I realize that each company might have a little differently, but uh, uh, you were able to uh, uh, give a good comparison and, uh, across the different companies, or they weren't all. You know, you, I just want to make sure that. Uh, we're uh, getting a good value on that on that machine. So what I did was I made up an RFQ uh, with what I thought the hot box should come with. Um, they do now make hot boxes on a tandem axle and also on a single axle. So the company's uh, bidding had to identify if it was a tandem axle trailer or a single axle. They were all quoting on a hydraulic dump box uh, with a tailgate with a door at the rear, flashing lights. So everything was was identified. Yes, some items are different based on manufacturer, 
but on, on the most part, they had a list of criteria that they had to meet, and they all seem they are all right there. Thank you, uh, Mr. Hyman. Uh, that's all, Mayor Bibles. Council Wells. You're muted, Councillor Wells. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, everything's good with me. Uh, Councillor Mellon answered uh, a few questions that I asked. As far as comparing apples to apples, so I'm I'm good with this. Okay, nothing further. Then I'll call for the vote, please. Mayor Bivelds. Yes. Deputy Mayor. Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Wells? Yes. Motion carries. Next action request is TS 2020 06, RFT number TS 20 18, surface treatment. Moved by Councillor Lewis, second by Councillor Mellon, that the Council of the Municipality of South and Dallas accept report. TS 2020-06 to award the tender for surface treatment, micro resurfacing and double surfacing with fog seal to Smith Construction Company in the amount of $306,933.30 plus HST. Jeff again, please. Thank you, Mayor and Council. In front of you, you'll find the results of the RFT, uh, which the municipality put out to gain pricing for surface treatment. This is a yearly uh, program which we run for our summer maintenance. Uh, during the 2020 budget deliberations, uh, Dr. Miller, Siebert Road, Smale, Zirin were identified as roads that should be addressed. Um, while this RFT went out, I, I deleted Siebert from the equation and we added broken second into it as a provisional item. Reason being is it's a small stretch of road which is in the village of Iroquois, which allows residents of Iroquois to exit going west on Highway 2 if there was ever an accident at the roundabout. Uh, that is an ongoing concern, that small stretch of road, which is about 300 meters long um, for pothole repairs and just regular maintenance. So we put it on the, um, the RFT as a provisional to gain pricing and the results of uh, the pricing can be found in the report. Staff recommends that we proceed with uh, Dr. Miller, Siebert, Zier, uh, Smale, or sorry, Dr. Miller, Smale, Zirin, and Broken Second as our 2020 surface treatment program. Is there any more questions? I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you, Council Wells. Um, no, the price seems good. It's just. Uh, I guess if everything was out there, like, so on that little stretch, Jeff, uh, on the broken second. So just bring me up to, uh, as far as the micro resurfacing that, are they gonna, are they gonna pulverize that, then redo it, or what goes on with that part where it's really bad? So that whole stretch, uh, Councillor Wells, uh, it will be pulverized. There will be additional 5-8 stone brought in to beef up the base, correct the cross fall, and then there will be a double surface treatment go on it with a fog seal to cap it off. So it'll be kind of the same process that we use to do Pigeon Island. It'll be the, the final same outcome. Because that seems like, like a really good price to do all those roads. Uh, I read the report, I, I'm, I'm good with it. Thank you, Jeff. Councillor Mellon, please. Uh, yes, um, the roads we're doing, Jeff, uh, Smale, is that, will that be pulverized also? All the road, like the roads that we're gonna resurface, uh, Mike, uh, are they gonna be pulverized first? No, Smale uh, is the only road that is gonna be microed, and it's gonna have a single lift of micro because that road is fairly good right now. We are gonna do some asphalt repair in front of the farm. Uh, where the heavy equipment turns, the milk trucks turn coming out of the driveway. But other than that, the rest of that roadway uh, with some, some pothole repair by the municipal staff, 
and we feel it, it should maintain with just a micro, a single layer of micro, just to up the top. Any potholes that are there now or any dips in the road there now will be before it's um, micro. Is that what That's you're correct. saying? And then uh, making, making compensations for uh, at, uh, because uh, like you said, at the farmer's gates, because uh, they will tear that road up. It's, you've done it at another couple of locations and it's worked uh, very well, Jeff. So, uh, no, I haven't got a problem. Drive on, good price. That's yeah, so those please. Jeff, I'm glad to see that you uh, you got a price on the broken second. Uh, that little stretch is in, in real bad shape. It's almost like going uh, through a cow path. Uh, and I don't, uh, I think it deserves it more than uh, Seabird at this time. So. Uh, good work and good pricing. Mayor Gardner, please. Thanks, Mayor Bybelt. I agree, Jeff, with everyone's I really like the fact that you included the broken second. I know that's uh, of, uh, a lot of concern for uh, the folks in Iroquois, so thanks for that. Okay, and just to clarify, Zirin is also getting single micro too, according to the spec, right, Jeff? That is correct. We're going to do the same thing, uh, Mayor Bygo. We're going to do the little isolated uh, pothole repairs. We're going to double check the culverts, make sure they're in good shape, and then they'll be uh, we'll have a single lift of micro applied. Okay. Sounds good. Micro is a good uh, um, serves as well to lengthen the um, the length of how long those roads last. So, anything else from anybody, Member of Council? Seeing none, I'll call the vote, please. Mayor Bybell? Yes. Deputy Mayor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Wells? Yes. Motion carries. Next report is TS 2020-07, RFQ number TS 20-15. 6x4 diesel cab and chassis with Roller Pro system, plow and wing. Moved by Deputy Mayor Gardner, second by Councillor Lewis, that the Council of the Municipality of South and Dallas accept report number TS 2020 07 to award the tender for the purchase of a 6x4 SBA diesel cab and chassis with Roller Pro system, plow and wing to Rush Truck Center in the amount of $303,739.04 plus HST, and the purchase of three roll-off bins in the amount of $43,440 plus HST. Yeah, please. So well, thank you, Mayor and Council. So in front of you, you'll find the, the results of the RFQ, which we, uh, which the municipality put out for pricing. During budget, 2020 budgets, um, a unit was identified, which is unit 60, to be replaced through our fleet replacement schedule. Um, at that time, uh, staff had identified purchasing a, a, roll -off, or a truck with a roll-off system. It was then decided that we wait until the new environmental um, person comes on board um, as they may or may not want that roller-style system. Since our new uh, supervisor or director has come on board for environmental, we believe that this roll-off system will serve two purposes while helping both departments, the transportation department, as well as the environmental services, moving the roll-off bins in the landfill to improve safety so that nobody has to go on top of the hill. Also, it will serve as a front-line front line plow truck during our winter season and during snow-bearing events. I'll be more happy to uh, answer questions at this time. Thank you. I'm going to Deputy Mayor Gardner, please. Thanks, Mayor Bybelt. I think we... Pretty wholesome discussion about uh, this piece of ma machinery uh, and Danielle's in support of it. So uh, I'm okay with this as presented. Thank you. Council Lewis, please. Just a quick question, Jeff. Uh, the roll off bands, that is a total of $43,440 for all three. That's not a single roll off. No, the roll-offs come in at a price of $14,480 plus tax per bin. So that is for the accumulate the, the total of three bins. Good. No, I have I have no problem with this. We had a as Deputy Mayor Gardner said, we had a 
lengthy discussion on this, and that's the uh, that's a good price. Thank you, Councilman Allen. Please. Well, thank you. Um, as I uh, as I read this and see this, we're about nine thousand and change short on um, from what we have in the budget. Uh, what we had budget for this at three hundred thousand. Um, the remainder of it will come out of fleet reserve, the nine nine and change, or where will the uh, where will where will we find that nine thousand to um, meet the shortcomings just on the truck? It'll come out of fleet reserves. Okay, thank you. The next question is uh, on the roll off containers. That will be coming out of will that be coming out of fleet or out of our landfill? Um, operations or that's if it where i guess clarify first where that's going to be coming from well let's answer yeah. that question Councilor Mello. Yeah. you can answer that the answer is there but who is it i'm uh, missing it then mayor bible coming from our efficiency funding yeah sorry sarah i didn't quite catch that it's from where coming from our efficiency funding the service modernization fund that we received oh all righty uh, all right, I missed that. Uh, I read it too quick. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, no other questions right now. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Wells, please. Uh, yeah, the, the price for the truck was good and everything, Jeff. Uh, I don't think we should actually purchase these three uh, roll off containers uh, right yet because. Until we know exactly what's going to happen with the dump, um, I think we're jumping into it because if we're going to transport, recycle stuff for metal or anything, uh, I, I agree with the truck, which is replacing one plow truck. But I, I think we can put those three roll-offs off for a bit because uh, I don't see a need for them personally myself. Uh, right now, till we actually know exactly what's going to go on with the dump, like are we going to get expansion or anything like the the stuff we've been going through with uh, the well issue and all that stuff. So we could end up buying these and not even having a dump to use them anywhere. Uh, as far as the roll off containers go for anything else, we have dump trucks uh, to move uh, stuff. Basically, it's just going to be used for the dump is what i'm looking at so i would actually put the containers on hold and uh, uh, see what happens after all the dump reports and water reports and everything comes back thank you i see danielle's on can you uh, respond to that please if you can Can you, okay, there we go. Yeah, closer. Uh, yeah, so I understand your concerns, Councillor Wells. Um, you do. I understand that you want to wait to see what the landfill, uh, what happens with the landfill. Um, my only suggestion would be is that if we decide not to move forward with the landfill, we would be looking at a transfer station method anyways. And normally a transfer station uses these type of roll-off bins. Um, so I would think we would be moving that way anyways. Um, but I'll leave that up to council to decide. But I would think that these would be a great asset moving forward because we have uh, plans for them to be included in our conversion programming. So using them for scrap metal, uh, for construction waste, and for some other items that we hope to uh, get out of the landfill. Um, and the more, of course, that we can divert from the landfill, the better that looks on our application for expansion at Matilda to the Ministry of Environment. So. Um, if you have any other questions, I, I can answer those. Council, well, yes, uh, Mayor Bibles. Uh, I understand where you're coming from, Danielle. Uh, as far as uh, the diversion goes, the, the scrap part, I believe we're tied in on the contract uh, for all the, the scrap steel right now. Uh, I know everyone's shaking their head, but I thought it went out or wasn't a word to anyone because it was a word before. So um, I, if it's good for the uh, Ministry of Environment to show them we have three containers sitting there for diversion and stuff, 
I, I guess I'm okay with it, but uh, that 44,000, whatever, 900 some, not going to change. Like we can buy them at any time. So this will keep this under budget, then move on. Like in our application, you can put that we will purchase roll off containers. I, I'm just trying to save the public some money, like instead of buying this, because once you buy them, uh, even if they're not used, you go and sell them, it's about 20% less what you paid for them. It doesn't matter what you buy. So I'm still thinking as long as if we can put in there saying that we're going to purchase this, uh, I'm sure the Ministry of Environment for the expansion or transfer station or everything will still be good. So my choice would still just to let these go till we see the final reports on everything pertaining to the Matilda landfill site. Thank you. Any further comment, Danielle? Just to clarify, yeah, we don't have a contract with uh, any steel, scrap steel company. It goes to Gerdo right now in Cornwall. Uh, we don't we don't have an outstanding agreement with anyone for scrap removal. Um, actually, Public Works is kind enough to let us borrow uh, one of their, um, I guess a shovel is kind of pretty much what it's called. Um, and we load up Gerdo's bins right now, which is actually taking money from our revenue because we're actually renting the bin from, from Gerdo to use it to load with scrap metal. Um, so we're paying for that right now out of our revenue already. If we owned our own, we wouldn't have to do that. Um, but I understand, I understand your perspective, Councillor Wells. So I just wanted to mention the thing about the scrap metal, that's all. Yes, Councillor Wells. And as far as the steel goes, uh... Again, I understand where you, if we had our own, but we still have to truck it there. Um, where you just have the containers come in, they fill it or we fill it or whatever, it's a lot less money that we don't have to worry about upkeep in the vehicle. Um, I'm good with roll off truck, it's not much price difference there, but. These containers, I, I'm still leaning that we just wait because like even if someone brings in a container, like there's a lot of steel companies just bring it in, they give you a percentage of what the scrap steel is worth at the at the present time. Uh, right now the steel prices are very low. Uh, for us to actually load it and take it down, we probably lose money. So, and again, I'm just think if uh, we wait a little bit on these, those by the truck, those containers, we can get them anytime, like quick. So that's uh, not going to uh, carry on anymore. Thank you. Okay, so I, I have a few comments. Um, we had a real good discussion of budget, so I think um, that carries a lot of weight. Um, one thing, if we don't decide to do the roll offs, then it doesn't make much sense to buy a roll off truck. I think it's one big package and we do it right and do it once. Uh, my question to you, Jeff, is that um, I don't see a salter on this. Is that just me missing it, or is there no salt box? No, that was you missing it. It comes with a salt box. It, the, the dump box has the salter incorporated on it. It'll have a front and left corner spinner, the same style of uh, salt box that we use right now. And uh, it, it won't hold the, the same amount. We're a few tons short versus a regular tandem truck. That still doesn't uh, affect the outcome or the uh, the uh, the product, the end product. So it does come with a, a salt box on it. Okay, fair enough. I didn't see, I didn't see anything in mention of a salt box. I know we discussed it, but uh, I want to want to make sure that it was there. It didn't make any sense not to have that either. So, any further comments, questions from council? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote, please. Mayor Bivels. Yes. Deputy Mayor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Wells? No. Motion carries. Next report TS 2020 08 installation of street lights in Mariah Town. Moved by Councillor Wells, second by Deputy Mayor Gardner, that the Council of the Municipality of South Dundas accept report number TS 2020 08. 
to not install an additional street light on Julia Street in Mariah Town. Yeah, please. Thank you, Mayor and Council. So this was the, the ongoing uh, debate that we've had with uh, correspondence which came in from a resident on Julia Street. Um, your findings on this report will describe the area in Mariah Town that we're referring to off of the, the map which I presented. Um, it has identified where street lights are, which represent the, the intersections. Um, I also went for a walk in that area uh, one evening to, to see the lighting for myself, and I found there to be sufficient lighting. Um, at the end of the day, if council chooses to install lights, well, then we can put lights in. But at this point, staff is recommending that we do not install any additional street lighting on Julia Street. I'll be more than welcome to uh, answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Anything, Councillor Wells, please? Uh, yes, Jeff. I remember that council meeting where it came with that letter. And actually, right after that council meeting, I did drive up there. Uh, looking at your map, I see where the lights are, but there's personally myself, I don't think there's enough lighting. Um, especially if you're going by not sure on the street here. Okay, so you're going up Mill Street, and Mill Street goes around, so I just I'm gonna use the residence there like Rex Wager lives at the far corner. And uh, all these yellow dots, there's lights there now, but in between uh, myself, especially going up Mill Street, I found it pretty dark myself. But um, I don't know if these lights can be changed to, uh, I'm not, I'm sure they're not LED, I don't think. Yes, they are. They're all LED. Um, and they're, there are four LED as far as I'm concerned. I, I think there should be more lighting there, but um, like I said, I, I just drove around. Maybe if you get out and walk, then you you would see more of it. That night I do I did drive around, so uh, but I'll take your recommendation, Jeff, if uh, you walked around and you think it's good, I'm good with it. Thank you. Councilman Allen, please. Yeah, I, I'm going to uh, agree with uh, the recommendation. Um, I'm sure there's dark spots, or lit spots all over our hamlets and our uh, towns and whatnot. Um, but, um, you know, I did get some feedback from an individual that I know in that area. And, they didn't think it was too bad. I guess it's all on one's perspective. Somebody would think that it's sufficient. The next one would think it's uh, it's not. Um, you know, you could get into a situation where we're going to light her up like a Christmas tree. Uh, but uh, I, I I think it's sufficient, and uh, I agree not to put any more in there. Council Lewis, please. <clears throat> um, I agree with your recommendation, Jeff. I uh, didn't take one trip up there, but I took two. And the one, the first time I drove around with the deputy mayor, then the second time I decided to go up and park my truck and take a little walk. Um, I think there's a lot of lighting there. Now, uh, I think maybe the lighting's on, on the curves are set back too far, and I don't mean back in on the property, but back from the curve too much. But other than that, I thought that it, there was plenty of lighting. Uh, so I'll, I agree with your recommendation. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Gardner, please. Thanks, Mayor Byveldt. Um, as Louis said, I did drive around uh, in that area, and I have been back since. Um, I think some of the problems are that there's some vacant lots and if there were houses on those lots it would definitely brighten up that space so i think that's where the pockets of darkness are um just a quick question for you jeff because i don't think we've covered this with the street light repairs and maintenance account how how is that managed like do you 
uh, do you look at areas that potentially need more lighting? Is there a cycle that lights are replaced if you know to Councillor Wells's point they're poor LEDs like how how is that account managed? So the street light repairs and maintenance is just strictly as it says. It's as street lights go out, we call in our, our electrician through recurring services and they come and repair the street light, existing street light, and it gets charged against that GL account. Um, any big projects like Crookshank Way I will identify those through capital and then we'll move forward as, as a capital item. Uh, the little one offs, uh, if council chose to put a street light out there or two, it would go against that account. And that's kind of just the way it works because I didn't identify it as a capital. So that's how the repairs and maintenance uh, account goes for the street lighting. It just kind of okay. all gets absorbed into one. Okay. And just a quick question. I if you don't know off the top of your head, but the lights that are there now, are they an older version? Are they the part of the ones that have been updated? Like maybe it's a case of not putting more lights, but when those are due to be replaced, maybe putting better, stronger lights? Those lights, and I, and I might speak off turn here, and maybe Shannon can help me with this. When they did the rehab for Iroquois and Morrisburg to bring everything up to LED lights, the town of Mariah Town, or the, the little hamlet of Mariah Town, was done at the same time. So they're the same street lights that you'll see in Morrisburg and that you'll see in Iroquois. So they're all the exact same. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any further comments? Seeing none, I'll call the vote, please. Mayor Bivell? Yes. Deputy Mayor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Wells? Yes. Motion carries. So we're going to move into bylaws. I will step aside for the first bylaw, and Deputy Mayor Gardner can go ahead. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, we've got it here. Uh, so, uh, Sean, can you please speak to this? Deputy Mayor, may I, may I read the motion? Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> so it's moved by Councillor Mellon, second by Councillor Wells, that bylaw number 2020-27 being a bylaw to assess the maintenance costs of the TA Weaver Municipal Drain be read and passed in open council, signed and sealed. Thanks, Madam Clerk. <laughs> okay, Sean. Can you speak to this? Thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. Uh, yes, this is a bylaw to assess out the maintenance costs that were uh, performed on the uh, TA Weaver Municipal Drain in 2012. Uh, that drain was was maintained in in two phases, and this was the phase, the second phase. Unfortunately, for whatever circumstances at the time, the uh, the grant was not applied for. Uh, Council did approve an amount of up to $642 in order to uh, to reduce the cost of the of the maintenance since the uh, grant was not applied for. Um, that amount actually calculated to $628.88.89. The net amount to be assessed out to the watershed is $1,500.10 and 31 cents. And for all of these drain Bylaws, the due date is November 30th. Thanks, Thank you. W. Treasurer. Uh, does anyone have any comments, concerns? Councillor Lewis? No, I believe we had a very lengthy discussion on the Weaver uh, drain. And uh, I said that uh, the, uh, the landowner shouldn't, uh, shouldn't come up with that money. I don't know if it was our mistake or whose mistake it was, but I think it's our responsibility to pay for it. And hopefully next time uh, we'll get this straight. Councillor Mel. Uh, uh, no, I, uh, I'll echo uh, Councillor Lewis's uh, sentiments, I guess, if you will. Um, it's up to us to apply for the uh, gra uh, drainage grant uh, since it wasn't, um, this is something our budget amount in that in that uh, our drainage uh, program. So uh, I have no problem. I support uh, 
carrying on with this. Okay, Council. Thanks, Councillor Wells. No, um, again, we had a good, good discussion. I'm good with everything, and uh, move on. Thank you. Okay. Can we call for a recorded vote? Deputy Mayor Gardner. Yes. Councillor Lewis. Yes. Councillor Mellon. Yes. And Councillor Wells. Yes. Motion is carried. Mayor Bradley, it's over to you. Thank you. Um, next bylaw is 2020-38 BMG branch of the John Haynes drain. Moved by Councillor Lewis, second by Councillor Mellon, that bylaw number 2020-38 being a bylaw to assess the maintenance costs of the BMG branch of the John Haynes Municipal Drain be read and passed in open council, signed and sealed. John, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this bylaw is to assess out the uh, maintenance costs of the BMG branch of the John Haynes Drain. Uh, it was maintained in 2013 at a cost of $5,417.12. The Agricultural Drain Drainage Infrastructure Program grant was received in the amount of $1,349. The net amount to be assessed out to the properties in the watershed is $4,068.12. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments, questions, concerns from any member of council on this? Seeing none, a call vote, please. Mayor Bodvelt? Yes. Deputy Mayor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Wells? Yes. Motion carries. Next one is 2020-39, Ralph Summers Municipal Drain. Moved by Councillor Wells, second by Councillor Lewis, that bylaw number 2020-39 being a bylaw to assess the maintenance costs of the Ralph Summers Municipal Drain be read and passed in open council, signed and sealed. John. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this bylaw is to assess out the maintenance costs for the Ralph Summers Municipal Drain, which was maintained in 2013 at a cost of 3,113.86. The uh, Agricultural Drainage Infrastructure Program grant was received in the amount of $972.78 and the net amount to be assessed out to the watershed is $2,521.08. Thank you. And once again, the due date for this train will be November 30th. Thank you. And just to correct you, Sean, it's $592, not $992. Apologies, I thought I misspoke. Yeah, that's okay. Better to catch it than not. Okay, any uh, comments, concerns, questions from any member of council? Seeing none, call the vote, please. Mayor Bivald? Yes. Deputy Mayor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Wells? Yes. Motion carries. Consent agenda, please. Moved by Councillor Mellon, second by Councillor Wells, that all items listed under general consent section of the agenda be adopted as presented even except for items 9C, 9F, and 9H be moved to discussion items. Okay, so tonight we have some in information from the Trans Northern Pipelines, um, an update from the House of Lazarus on what they're doing uh, during this COVID period. Uh, we have joint tender results uh, along with the County, City of Cornwall, and the rest of uh, the lower tiers SDG on salt purchase. We have key information report on the Williamsburg landfill capping tender. Uh, we have also a key information report on our summer students for this year. Uh, Carmen House, oh, that's the one that's pulled. And then we have a project status update key information report. All heard the motion, those in favor? Oh, sorry, call the vote. Mayor Bivalds? Yes. Deputy Mayor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Wells? Yes. Motion carries. So we'll move on to boards, committees, and discussion items. The first section is council representative. Uh, I'll call on Deputy Mayor Gardner for a county council update, please. Thanks, Mayor Bivell. 
At five Elts, we had a, a fairly quick uh, counties meeting today, but we did discuss the winter maintenance agreements between the counties and the other townships. Uh, we did have a pretty lengthy discussion on uh, the financial impact of COVID-19 when we found ourselves with a bit of a, a surplus, if you will, uh, from the tenders going out for the uh, paving. Um, so it was decided that we would put away $500,000 or back into reserves to deal with COVID-19 and also um, 500,000 towards uh, Dundas Manor and then 500,000 towards culvert work within the counties. Uh, we did have a presentation about the impacts of planning um, during COVID-19, i.e. public meetings and that sort of thing. Um, and I think that was it. Maybe I missed something there, Bivelts. No, I think you covered the the high points. Any comments or questions from council? Um, yeah, council um, no, thank you, Mayor Bivelts. Uh, either Deputy Mayor Gardner or yourself maybe could answer that. And uh, I've had some inquiries as to when uh, County Road 16, uh, the, the bridge. When do you have a? Do they have a proximate start date? on when that'll be. You said it was gonna be about 90 days, but um, I've been asked several times as to when exactly do they think they're gonna start? Um, we don't have a start date and I apologize for that, uh, Councilor Mellon. I had been considering that uh, that would be good information for uh, the residents of South Dundas, especially the Brinson area to know of. So I'll reach out to uh, the county uh, transportation planning department and get that information and pass it on to council and make sure that <clears throat> those dates get posted at our website. Thank you. That'd be, uh, that'd be very well, uh, very well used. Okay. Anything else? Thank you, Deputy Mayor Gardner. Uh, any cemetery board, Councillor Wells? Uh, no, Mayor Weigel. Uh, there was no Airqua District Business Group meeting, BIA at all, Council Lewis? No. Um, South Nation Conservation, Council Mellon? Um, well, there's not much to report. They're still working through a lot of their stuff. Uh, I think uh, I sent, the, or at least uh, staff had sent out that they've opened up their ramps, their boat ramps, and uh, installed their docks, I guess, if you will. Uh, I believe last week at their boat ramps um, uh, and they're evaluating their parks and uh, trails. Uh, some will, there might be some more open, but uh, not much more uh, uh, because of social distance and restrictions there. And um, our next uh, South Nation meeting, it'll be a teleconference uh, this Thursday, uh, May 21st. Just a second, I was multitasking there. Any questions for Councillor Mellon? Thank you, sir. Uh, no waterfront committee meetings at all. Um, South Branch Fund Committee hasn't met, correct? Uh, no, not yet. They're, <laughs> I don't know, they're gonna maybe have to do something if there's projects that wanna move ahead this summer, but no, there has been no uh, communication to me anyways as to what they're gonna be doing. I don't know if Shannon could uh, enlighten uh, what their options are um, as, as far as a teleconference maybe, um, but uh, I don't know right now, there's been nothing. Go ahead, Shannon. Um, as far as maybe the, then the, the clerk can correct me if I'm wrong, but the procedural bylaw indicates that uh, no committees can meet at this time unless we look at changing that. Okay, um, we'll just wait. Thank you. Okay. Carmen House hasn't met. I know he's been talking to our staff. Uh, Archives Committee hasn't met. Tourism Advisory, Economic Development, and Doctory, nothing there either. Okay, I know it's a little slow, but. Um, next item is a, a letter from uh, Mayor Rob Burton from the Town of Oakville concerning rent relief advocacy. Um, who put this up? 
I believe that came from you, Mayor Bivelt. Oh, well, it didn't need to be a discussion item. It could have been just in consent. That was you, the plan. Would you like a resolution to support this? I had no desire for that, to be honest. Okay. That, then we could just uh, pass, pass over it. Okay, is anybody all good? Because that was supposed to be in consent item. Okay, we're good, thank you. Use of local contractors. That'd be Councillor Wells, we'll speak to that. Okay, I didn't know that, no name, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, yes, as um, going out, because recently uh, new companies have been involved and uh, as to, uh, I don't know if I can say it, our conversation with Mayor Bible's there uh, about how to go about for uh, imitation of a quote. If it would be in uh, conflict, if uh, a relative was to uh, own a company or whatever. So what I brought, what I want to do is bring it to staff that when we go out for imitation quote <clears throat> underneath our procurement, uh, whatever it's twenty thousand dollars or whatever, like in the situation for um, all the jobs under the procurement, that we have a list of our all local contractors that we can send an email out and say if you want to request. Uh, documents to uh, to uh, supply us with our RFP that you can do so. So everyone has a fair chance that it's not every time because the way we practiced it before was, okay, we would ask three different companies to do one imitation quote, the next time ask three different companies. In our municipality, we have I haven't counted them all, probably nine, at least, maybe 10. That this way, that everyone, there's no conflict, that everyone has a equal chance. Like, so if we put something out for uh, RFP or invitation quote, everyone gets an email from the municipality, and it's up to the individual companies to send in a request to tender documents to uh, supply us with RFP. And if not, at least they were asked to. So basically it's just being fair to every contractor in our municipality. And then after that, when it goes over our procurement, it has to vote for tender. So then it's a open ball game. But as far as going to all this other jobs under the procurement that I recommend staff ask every contractor associated with whatever, whether it's uh, construction, uh, electrical. Now, the carpenter part, that's the only part we don't have reoccurring service. Uh, we have plumbing, we have HVAC, we have uh, electrical. So to be fair to all the construction uh, contractors that we just invite everyone across the board if uh, we go out to invitation of quote. And I remember Council Lewis back in the day when we were uh, campaigning about using our local contractors. So this is an opportunity that everyone has a chance underneath the procurement price. So everyone gets asked. Thank you. Shannon, comments, please. Um, the only thing I would comment is if we want to look at for an invitation of quote of ensuring that we capture all the local contractors, I would recommend is that we put something in the paper. It's it's very low cost, but it, it does capture everybody in the municipality uh, just because every day there could be a new contracting company that comes up that we're not aware of. And this just gives the onus back on all contractors that it's in the paper. If you want to bid on it, you can submit your interest and then we'll send you the documentation. So we could do it like that, very low cost. Councillor Wells, comment first, and then I'll go around. Uh, no, I'm I'm good with that. If uh, the rest of council is good with just putting the paper, at least it's, uh, I know when I was uh, still in the construction, hypothetically, I read all local newspapers for, uh, 
contracts in uh, different places. So the papers is a good way. So if, uh, if uh, they do their due diligence by the paper every week, then uh, no issues with just so as long as everyone has an opportunity. So it's not like we're picking free for any individual thing. Thank you. Okay, Shannon, go ahead, please. If it's something that council wants to look at, we'll look at our procurement policy just to make sure that if it doesn't speak to that, we can come back with an amendment to that as far as an invitation to quote. Okay, let's get comments from councilor. Councilor Mellon, any comments on this? Uh, yeah, uh, I can see what councilor uh, Wells is coming from, and uh, I think we need to, uh, uh, as Shannon has uh, alluded to, uh, put this out on uh, our website and in local papers. Uh, Maybe more than once a year. I don't know how often, uh, because yeah, I, I have heard of uh, somebody that uh, might have bid on a, on a on a job that we did on one of our facilities, but oh, they didn't know about it. Well, uh, I think staff could probably very easily overlook, um, you know, a company out there that they may not know about, whatever. So uh, if we advertise it, you know, and ask them to at least contact us and uh, get their name on that list. So that when we come around to doing uh, procurement uh, on a certain project, whatever it might be, carpentry, plumbing, whatever it might be, uh, there's a list, and uh, that list is updated on an annual basis, or on you know maybe semi-annually basis, or if somebody asks, you know, adds their name into the list, if, you know, if they miss it the first time around. But yeah, it's not a bad idea. And again, so just for clarification for Councillor Mellon, so. As far as the recurring services, recurring services go out and they're usually good for every two years, but they do go in the local papers. So it is available to anybody that wants to bid on, on certain uh, items such as electrical, plumbing, HVAC, all that stuff. So it is put in our local papers though. Could we do something similar to this, um, I guess, on a, an annual basis for uh, this, to this point that uh, Councillor Wells has uh, brought up? So that we have a, a an ongoing list for the contractors that might be uh, interested in or able to bid on jobs. So, correct me if I'm wrong, Councillor Bells. It's it's more for the invitation or quotes for small projects that are under thousand yeah. dollars that don't require us to go out for tender. We would put it in the paper and look for quotes from local contractors. So it'll be a, a per pro, per project uh, tender. Thank you. Yeah, yes, Shannon, you're uh, you're correct. It's just uh, like I like the idea about the the paper, uh, the paper website. Uh, it's a cheap to put an ad in for uh, say, okay, we're going to build a eight by eight building. Any interest parties, they can uh, call and get the documents sent to them, and they can uh, uh, supply us with the RFP, the the quote and stuff. Uh, as far as our permits, like any director can go out, I think is 20,000. We did their last time when we increased it. So anything over and above that, I'll say I'll go for tender, but just so everyone's the easiest way, instead of even emailing everyone, it goes in the paper and there you go. Uh, it's basically it's the invitation to everyone. If you want to, uh, participate in this, uh, uh, project, you uh, you send us an email and we send you the documents. So you're, if there's any addendums or anything related to this, and that's the idea of having that come back to us. So if there is any addendums, that we have a list of all the people instead of us calling everyone, uh, saying okay, there's a denim. This way, they ask for the the documents. And if there's a denim, we can send it to them and it's fair for everyone. So at the end of the day, all I was trying to do is just make it fair that we're not, as far as invitation quote, ask three different, three different, three different ones on the next project. It's straight across the board. Everyone has the same uh, fighting chance to get the the smaller jobs in the municipality. So I would, I would, take Shannon's recommendation about this one in the paper and the website, and then there would be no talk in behind saying, well, I never had a chance. Well, it was in the paper, you had a chance. So that's basically what I wanted to do here tonight. Thank you. 
understand that, Councillor Mellon. So every quote will go out instead of getting a list. Yeah, I, I see what you're okay. I thought um, I understand what you're saying now. I, I catch your uh, I catch your clarification on that. Okay, yeah. Councillor Lewis, anything? I agree with where Councillor Wells is coming from, but with my years uh, in the recreation field, uh, I find a lot of businesses, local businesses. They don't want to be bothered with the municipality of South Dundas. Uh, I know on many occasions I have called local businesses for pricing. They don't even want to talk to me, you know. Uh, I believe we put almost everything in the paper anyways, or it's on our website. Uh, I, I think the municipality is doing a good job on it. Uh, and, and that's just my two cents worth. I just find a small project, local businesses doesn't want to get involved. So that's why we have to send it out. Thank you. Mayor Gardner, please. Thanks, Mayor Bybells. Um, you know, if we can come up with a process that is better, uh, that makes sure that uh, the local, our local contractors are uh, connected with on this. Um, I'm okay with that. I mean, I would even suggest, I don't know if we need to put an ad every single time we have a thing. You could do it seasonally, uh, do it four times a year where you just call, you know, put a call in the paper, have them contact the municipality. And then when the little jobs go up, the email goes out kind of thing. Um, I think if there's one thing we've learned during COVID-19, it's the fact that the local businesses matter. Um, and if we can come up with a process that is fair um, and does use the local contractors, but is fair to the residents, the taxpayers, et cetera, uh, I think that uh, things can always be improved on. So I'm, I'm uh, game to uh, uh, take a crack at this and see if we can come up with something that uh, will get our local uh, contractors interest in doing business with us. Council Wells. Yeah, just one last comment uh, to Councillor Lewis. Uh, being a contractor myself, prior to being a counselor and bidding numerous municipal jobs, uh, a lot of the smaller ones is how they were presented and put out for tender. Uh, there's a lot of when you, I, I think with their staff we got now, the, the preparation to a good imitation of quote tells the story. Like if you go up there and you're not getting this, well, then you could call. Well, I'm not really sure. Well, people get you just get sick of it. But I think with the staff we got now, that when we go out the invitation of quote, things are laid out better for them. So smaller companies are want to bid this stuff. Uh, to uh, Deputy Mayor Kirchner there. Every all I'm saying, every little thing that's under our procurement, just put it on the, in the paper, and that way it's equal for everyone. It's in the paper. No one can come back and say, "Well, okay, we just picked these three. So every time there's a job that's underneath, like our procurement, which is twenty thousand, so you just come out. Okay, here it is. If you want a thing, you send in. So it's pretty. And uh, it just shows that everyone has their equal playing field and it's, it's good to go. Yeah, Shannon? Go ahead, Shannon. So just the one thing I want to cautious counsel uh, is that by putting in the paper, it not only opens it up to the local contractors, but anybody outside the area as well, too. So you could have somebody from Brockville or Ottawa or something that's reading the paper and we can't stop them from bidding on that project too. So just want to make sure council's aware. Which I have no problem with that. At least our, our contractors know. So there's, there's people out there. I know as a contractor myself, anything come up in a township or municipality, I always gave the best price it could because I wanted to um, do all the municipal jobs I can because it's you take pride in your municipality. So I think you'll just by it being in paper, I realize uh, 
it's a lot easier for us to just put it in paper. And I, I do see where you're coming from, Shannon, where outside things come. Well, you know what? You come in, uh, our local contractors, you sharpen your pencil a little bit because you should be able to get it because we're from this municipality. So at the end of the day, all I'm saying is I wanted all local contractors uh, be aware of what's going on with municipality as far as every job under the procurement price. So we put it in the paper. There you go. There's no more say, well, you pick this guy, you pick this guy. It's in the paper. It's uh, if you want to bid it, you can. Anything further? I guess my comment would be that we want to make sure that the process is as transparent as possible. Uh, Shannon does bring up the point that, you know, as much as we prefer local uh, in, in our hearts, in the end, the price is going to win as long as the job is done right. And we want to be, we really need to pay attention to make sure the jobs are always done right. I think, you know, there, the moral hazard might be that there's going to be one person that's going to land up being low on all the time and it might discourage everybody else, but it is competition. We'll see where it all ends up in the end. So, okay. Good enough, we'll see how it goes. Thank you. We have a key information report on the financial impact of COVID-19. Who's gonna to speak to that? Okay. Sarah, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor and Council. So this report is to provide an update to Council on the ongoing financial implications associated with COVID-19. Um, I asked each department head to review their budgets and provide a financial update on the impact to their department. So any savings realized, any lost revenues, et cetera. Um, so this report just summarizes the provided information. Um, it's not perfect, but I think it's a good starting point. And there's still a lot of unknowns at this point and the situation with COVID-19 is still evolving. So my plan is to update this report on a monthly basis for council as more information is known. And if council has any suggestions as to any additional information they'd like to see, then I'm open to any suggestions. Any comments, questions, concerns? Devin Mayor Gardner. Thanks, Mayor Byveld. Um, no, the only uh, question I have is uh, with um, our shutdown, I think it's probably more for Shannon, uh, Sarah, sorry. Uh, we have not had, we have not been incurring any overtime with our staff, right, Shannon, during COVID-19? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Council Lewis? No, no questions. Council Mellon? Just a comment. Uh, I'm glad we're tracking this. This is, I think, a good, good exercise for us to track it and see where our expenses uh, and our revenue is, is headed and going. And it's, uh, you know, just to keep a good handle on it. That's, um, that's all. Council Wells, anything? Uh, no, I'm. I'm the imp report looks good to me. Uh, thanks, Sarah. Okay, and I'll concur that you know it's a good to get this report on a periodic basis. I know the numbers look uh, um, actually good right now, but we're a long way from done. So let's not count our chickens and eggs till they all hatch. So good. Thank you very much. Um, next. Um, Item in the agenda is a letter from uh, a business. I think it is. Yeah, it's a business in Airqua that had a, a water leaking issue and was uh, billed for all the water that had uh, leaked out of their um, system. Um, he did send this letter to me, and I and I told him that I couldn't make a decision on that. That would be a council decision. So. First, I'll, I'll call on whoever staff would like to comment on this first and explain our policy and what we've done in the past to council, and then we'll make a decision on that. So, Sarah, go ahead. Thank you again, Mayor and Council. So, um, like Mr. Bivald alluded to, um, this uh, property owner, uh, they were gone for the winter and the pipes froze, so there was a lot of running water through that business unit. So typically um, what we do is we, we don't waive any of the extra water because it is treated water that has flown through their meter. Um, we give them a, a payment plan option that they can work towards. And generally we 
weigh the interest on that access water usage. And historically in the past, what have we uh, done for the majority of um, these issues? Or Shannon can just speak to it, because I know we do have policies and stuff like that, so go ahead. So um, in my tenure with South Dundas, we probably have had about uh, 20 requests of, the, of similar to this, and they've always been the, the fact that it's treated water and we work with the uh, the property owner to try and alleviate some of the cost by working at a payment plan, whether it's over six months, eight months or a year and try and work with them. It's unfortunate, but it's 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 treated water and there's a cost to us uh, at the water plant. Okay, thank you. So we'll go around the table. Uh, yes or no, Councillor Wells. Uh, no, uh, I've been in the situation too. Um, unfortunately, I, a year ago, I had a water bill that was like 10 times more than it should have been just because, uh, one of my units, uh, rental units, the, the toilet stuck on. It happens. It's unfortunately like it, if it's a frozen line, uh, precautions should have been taken before he left the country. It's, uh, I, I can see where he's coming from. I'm happy with the way we do it, uh, help with uh, making payments, but like it's mentioned, it's treated water, it costs municipality uh, to get that treated water there. Is, unfortunately, it's not our problem or our fault that his line broke. So uh, his part in his father's law funeral, but and again, like uh, it, my heart goes out to him and stuff happens, but bills have to be paid. So uh, the charge remains on my part. Thank you. Councilman uh, Allen. Yeah, I um, I agree. Um, I mean, it's unfortunate for this individual, but the individual has to take some of the responsibility for the fact that uh, he had nobody checking on the property over the winter or whatever length of time that he was gone away. And, and this happens with, um, if I have a water pipe break in my house, I'm going to have a mess. I make sure somebody's uh, checking on my property. Uh, I'm, you know, we, 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 I've seen these cases brought up or similar situations brought up to council in the past. And um, I, I agree with the way we handle it. We try and work the payment plan out with them. And uh, it's not, uh, the onus has to be somewhat on the owner to make sure that their property is well protected while they're away. Councilor Lewis. Excuse me. I agree with my colleagues. Uh, I don't know how long this individual has gone, but uh, it sounds like there was no heat in uh, in uh, on the premises, and uh, maybe he should have had somebody check on that. Uh, it's treated water. We treat everybody the same. It's a, it's a policy that I think is very uh, very outstanding policy. So I, I agree with my colleagues on that. Mayor Gardner, you you on? Seems like we've lost our deputy mayor. She's back. Sorry. That's okay. Things happen. Go ahead. Comments on this? No, I uh, I lost a portion, but um, no, I mean, it, it sounds like we have a uh, a little bit. You know, being a property owner sometimes is not uh, as much fun as. <laughs> people think um, and unfortunately frozen pipes in winter uh, if you don't have someone check in is going to happen so I'm I'm comfortable with what we uh, currently do to support uh, people that find themselves in a bit of a jam. Okay I guess we've made our decision please uh, can someone send this gentleman a letter uh, in that regard thank you. Um, next one's key information report on the forward house structure review that uh, we had asked staff to do uh, for us uh, for to determine our path forward concerning uh, any kind of rehabilitation. So Shannon, go ahead. 
Thank you, Mayor and Council. So just to give a little bit of background, uh, so um, Ann Presley was uh, presented to Council back in the fall of last year in regards to the Ford House, it, mainly referring to the EFI report that was done back in 2017, I believe. At that time, Council wanted uh, some additional information in regards to the structural integrity of the building to determine whether or not there was any um, need to continue the, the investigation process moving forward or to put any additional money uh, into that building. So as requested, we have reached out to Eastern Engineering, uh, who has provided a report which has been attached, uh, which kind of divides it into different segments of the building and their, uh, their uh, opinion on it. I will note that during their investigation, they did not do any destructive or invasive investigation. If Council wishes to go a little bit further on getting that report done, uh, we'd be looking in an additional $10,000 to complete that work. So um, with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions that Council may have. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Gardner, start please. Thanks, Mayor Byveld. Um, I read the report. Uh, I think it gives the Forward House Committee enough information to determine uh, their path. Um, I've said all along that my interest in the Forward House was that if there was a group or committee that came forward that wanted to take it over and that means fundraise and do whatever they need to do, that I would support that. Uh, I think we've had past conversations um, around the table about allowing uh, groups to take over buildings. And I think we discussed a deadline. I think that was prior to COVID-19. So we might wanna look at moving that deadline a little bit, but um, you know, I, I uh, there's a number there associated with it. And in my mind, if uh, the committee still wants to take on the forward house and uh, raise a, what was it? $550,000, um, then that that's their prerogative. And I will support that. I think um, these engineering reports uh, can be a, a yay or yay in May and sometimes be uh, doom and gloom. And again, if uh, members of the community want to rally the troops and uh, do the work and do the fundraising and come up with a group uh, that's going to pay for it, then I'm I'm good with it. So in my mind, I think this should be handed over to the Forward House Committee and uh, we wait for their uh, uh, determination on whether or not it's too big to take on or whether it's just about right. Councilor Lewis. I agree with uh, Deputy Mayor Gardner 100%. We had a very lengthy discussion on the, uh, the forward house. And at the end of that discussion, I, if everybody remembers, I said if the committee wants to do the fundraising to, uh, to get the money, that's fine. I will support it, but I will not support spending taxpayers' money. where I still stand. So if the, kid, if the committee wants to go and raise $550,000, I tip my hands to them. I, I will support them that, that way, but I'm not bound to give any, any money from, uh, from the taxpayers. Thank you. Councilman Allen, please. Well, yes, I mean, this report, I guess, is somewhat, well, I didn't pull out the report from 17 that was done, but it, but I'm, it appears what um, that report was saying that, you know, the building needs a lot, a lot of work. Uh, in this report, they don't even touch and they have alluded to the fact that they didn't get into the second story. So, uh, you know, the, somebody's going to say, well, the 550, you know, is probably a high number. Yeah, it's probably a, at the best a class D estimate. Uh, I'm going to say that if you get into the meat and bones of that structure, that that might be a low number. Um, I'm not in favor of uh, putting another 10,000 into a more uh, detailed um, uh, evaluation, you know, of uh, an engineer's report and whatnot. I think we've done uh, what we need to do. Um, I think the ball's in, uh, in their hands uh, to take this report. Um, they, you know, they may agree or may not agree with it uh, on the, on the, the total outcome of the cost of it would not but I mean, in the end run the building is still our building so it has to be brought up to a certain standard a certain building code standard etc cetera, etc cetera. 
so it has to be uh, done. It can't be done, you know, like as if it was your own home and you could work at it slowly and live in it. It has to be brought to a, a very high standard because it is a public use building or would be a public use building. So um, turn the report over to them, but um, and uh, let to see where they want to go uh, if they're fundraising, if they think that's uh, within their grasp, and if they want to do the extra ten thousand for the extra engineering to get a a real firm cost uh, for this building, then um, uh, more power to them. I think we need to put a, as Deputy Mayor Gardner has alluded to, uh, you know. Uh, a certain time frame on them, um, but with uh, COVID-19, I think we have to be a little bit flexible. Um, I mean, we can't keep dragging this uh, out uh, too much longer. Uh, we'll see where they go with this and, and what kind of, uh, you know, they're, they're gonna have to come up with a good chunk of money before they start this project. There's no sense starting it on a shoestring. They're gonna have to have, uh, you know, a good chunk of money, uh, I think, in my opinion, uh, up front to uh, to get the project underway, but uh, uh, I think we need to have a somewhat of a timeline from them as to uh, when uh, when when they're going to be uh, moving for bo moving forward in a productive manner. Council Wells. Uh, yeah, I. I read the report. Uh, I agree with all my colleagues as far as uh, what was said. Uh, honestly, my opinion as being in the business, uh, Eastern Engineering is being, uh, I, I'm sure it would cost more. The contingency would definitely be used. Um, to Councillor Mellon, they're on uh, 4.1 recommendations. It did include the second floor for a reconstruction of 15,000. But the whole building, like when we're, we're going on, like uh, not wasting tax. And if the committee wanted to go through with this, like we're talking, unless a big donor comes in, like in reality, to raise $515,000, uh, by the time they did, the building hypothetically could fall down. Uh, there's going by the, the all the pictures I've seen. Um, there's just one. Sometimes it's whether like the heritage about the building that it comes to a point. There's been a lot of building. Uh, you can't save every building. Um, this here uh, again, I would agree with my colleagues. Uh, first of all, we can't afford to spend this money on this building. Um, it's unfortunate things like this happens, but we got to move on and kudos out to them if, if they can come up with a plan. And again, going to uh, Councillor Mellon's uh, about a time frame, like we can't let this building just keep sitting there and sitting there because at the point it's just, uh, could it fall down? Probably not, but uh, it's just, it's our building, and so we have to put a time frame on it. And if, if you think you can come up with it, show us that you can. I, I'd be more than happy to support it. Might even help out a bit. But as far as uh, taxpayers' money, uh, no, I, I could never bring myself to uh, uh, spend that much money on a building that, if you look at the recommendations uh, 4.1, it states right here. It's, they recommend it's not even economical or feasible to do it. So I just, if, if they want to continue, um, I would like to ask Shannon the question because I think we talked about um, all like Matilda uh, building back there in Princeton that we're, we offered $5,000 to engineer each that if the committee wanted to see we put our 5,000 in. So my question to you, Shannon, how much did this report cost us from Eastern Engineering? This report here costs us, it costs us about $1,800. Okay, so it's a very good price, a very good report from uh, Eastern Engineering too. Um, so as far as the additional 10,000, 
Uh, I would put that back on the forward committee. Uh, I would say if, if they can, but there's there's definitely got to be a time frame. And unfortunately, it comes to tough decisions, and it's our job to make them. So if they can't come up with uh, a plan to uh, get this building, obviously we know where it's all going to go here. So uh, that's about all I have to say. Thank you. Yeah. I believe, and maybe uh, the clerk can tell me if I'm wrong. I believe the committee was given till the end of this year to come up with the plan and how they would finance, uh, whether it's a renovation or whatever of this building. Am I right on that, Brenda? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so um, I believe I brought the idea forward that we get this structural engineering report done. I know Councilor Wells is behind it too. Um, whether it's unfortunate or not, it just proved that the first one was was more accurate than most people had given it credit for. Um, this was maybe a bare bones report, but uh, um, I see a lot of holes that this thing can go from 515 way up to 750 uh, or something even scarier. So, um, you know, we can give it back to the committee. I think they need to be very realistic of what they're looking at. Um, they have two engineers report that say this building is done. Uh, I will give them kudos if they think they can come up with a plan to, to resurrect it. Um, in the end, uh, I do agree with council that it's not gonna be our money that's spent on this old building, it'll be theirs. Uh, any money we have left over, I'm gonna suggest we hang on to for now because uh, uh, if it lands up coming back into our lap, uh, then we're gonna have to have some funds to decide uh, its next path forward and I, um, I know this was a very controversial subject for the pre previous council, but uh, it seems like uh, uh, their decision in the early goal was probably more correct than wrong. So I'll give them credit for that. But uh, um, we all did say we'd give them a chance. This is their second report. Um, I say by the end of the year, something has to be on our table, whether it's um, either preliminary or something to, to see where we go forward with this. They go forward with this building. And if not, then uh, we will have to do uh, look at any kind of options we can to, to see where we go. So any further comments from council? OK, thank you. Then we'll uh, we'll send um, the group uh, a letter with uh, council's uh, thoughts and then we'll go from there. Next one's key information report on the water tower rehabilitation. Thank you again, uh, Mayor and Council. So just wanted to bring uh, this back before we um, put it back out for tender. Um, after our last meeting, as Council recalls, we uh, rejected the, the bid that we received uh, due to uh, number one, the pricing, but only that one, we only had one bidder. Um, in, in addition, we got some extensions from the provincial and federal government to, to allow this project to kind of uh, uh, be extended. So in that case, I had a discussion with Baracko, who did the welding inspection report, to look at whether or not doing the steel work on both towers was the best use of our funds, or if it was identified in, in his report, if we should look at something else. So. In discussions with him, it was identified and in the welding uh, inspection report um, that stage one of the Iroquois Tower was the most pressing. Um, that project was estimated to cost um, about $335,000 to do that. And that was to start immediately as soon as we had funds. So what I'm looking for council is, is to uh, allow us to proceed with um, amending the tender to include everything on stage one for Iroquois only, and we'll use the funds from the uh, CWWF to get all that work done um, under stage one. And then as council's aware, we do have an application in for the water tower rehabs. If we are successful, we can look at finishing stage two of Iroquois and then doing one and two in uh, Morrisburg. So any questions or comments, I'll be happy to answer them. Okay, Councilor Wells. <clears throat> no, Shannon, I, uh, it's, it's a good report on that. Uh, I do agree just going with Iroquois. Uh, we have 
the funds there and see where our other uh, applications go for the rest. But I uh, I agree with everything you just said there. So uh, I think it's uh, we know by the reports Iroquois is in uh, uh, dire need when they came and uh, presented their council. So no, I am uh, I am all for the way you. Uh, wrote this report up and I think it's uh, our best route. Thank you, Sam. Council Mellon. Uh, yeah, I can agree with uh, Shannon and, and his recommendation in this report also because uh, uh, we've been spinning our wheels for too long and not getting anything done. Uh, this gets us started. We need, we need to start somewhere and Iroquois has been identified as the most pressing need. So let's, let's get, Let's get moving and let's uh, let's get, you know let's get the worst fixed now and we'll continue to work through this and you know otherwise we're going to be sitting here in six month time and nothing done to any water tower so yeah. Council Lewis. You know, I I agree with uh, Sharon's recommendation. Uh, let's let's get it going. Uh, let's see if we can get something done within a year. Let's not drag on drag on like we have on other projects. So uh, I think we should uh, go ahead and uh, spend money in Iroquois. The water tower is worse than Morseburg. So uh, let's, let's get something done. Yeah, Mayor Gardner, please. Thanks, Mayor Bybelts. I uh, totally agree. Uh, let's move forward with Iroquois. I was really happy, Shannon, to see the quality assurance uh, program in there. I think it's good to learn from past mistakes. And I think that was part of uh, his presentation, Bronco's presentation that stuck with me the most was the fact that there had been no uh, quality assurance previously. So uh, let's, let's go. So, yeah, so just in addition to that, so as part of the tender, we do have a separate price from Brocco that will be included uh, that they will take care of the quality assurance. Uh, figuring that they did the report, it, it makes sense to have them as part of that project to, to manage it to make sure it gets done. Okay, so you have your uh, orders on getting this, uh, the water air quality tower done as best way possible. I like your idea of doing it. Um, the only comment I will have is get her done. It's Okay, um, so we're going into what we pulled off consent. The first one was key information report on Matilda Hall. Um, I thought it was good that council at least uh, had a report from staff on this. And if there's any questions or concerns, now it's time to do it before they keep on going through more. So, uh, Jamie, please. Yeah. Um, as you see in the report, we just finished phase one of it, uh, replacing. Uh, uh, the abatement of the asbestos flooring. Uh, they installed the, the VCT composite tile, um, replace of and resealing the, the windows in the building, and uh, replacement of the east and west entrance doors. And a uh, few uh, painting and patching of the auditorium itself as well. So, and then we are just waiting on uh, the res uh, for phase two. Uh, we're waiting on the FCC grant program to wait and see if we get any funding uh, to start phase two. And that grant will be reward, or awarded in August of 2018. Okay, and then the other comment I seen that you, you changed the existing ceiling because you had some funds left over. Yes, that, correct. Uh, just uh, it, uh, the yellow, it didn't really <laughs> go well and it was water stained and we just got rid of them because we had funding. So we replaced all the ceiling tiles. Okay, did you uh, manage to get rid of the two aeration fans, one covered and one will be covered? Yes, you can see in the one pictures that they, they are uh, they are done. So they are gone. I should keep Matt Councillor Mellon a little bit happier. Um, and some of the painting was uh, done to cover up some of the uh, blue that was uh, painted on some things. Yes, that's right. So we still have some blue left to cover for trim, but we'll get that done in phase two. Okay. So uh, any comments or questions, concerns from council? I will start actually with Deputy Mayor first. Um, looks good. Uh, one, well, two questions actually. 
The grant, is it retroactive? If you get it, can it be applied if you say you started the work now? I'd have to ask Danielle or Shannon. They'll have to answer that. I, I believe the application is it has to be incurred at that time of the awarding. Okay. I'm just checking just to see if we can move some of this stuff along. And uh, has there been any consideration to paint that wood? Not trying to nitpick, but uh, it kind of jumps off the page. It's been, it has been in discussion, yes. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. Councilor Lewis, you've seen this building more times than the rest of us, I'm sure. I've had nightmares on this building, for God's sake. Uh, I'm looking at the pictures. Uh, looks fantastic, but that blue is, wow, that's, that's, that's definitely a sore thumb. And definitely, as soon as I scrolled to the picture, it popped right out at me. But uh, no, the building uh, does look real good. I like that paint job, and I uh, I agree with the mayor. It's good to see that those uh, exhaust fans are gone. Uh, good work, Jamie. I tip my hat to you and, and your guys. Councilor Mellon, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Mayor Mills. I really like them exhaust fans, but no. Uh, <laughs> uh, they, were, they were there in the old days when you were sitting there smoking your cigarettes. Well, I missed the smoke eaters, too, that sat in the, uh, hung from the ceiling and did absolutely nothing except hum. But anyway, the hall is starting to shake shape. I'm, I'm very happy about that. Um, you know, the woodwork, uh, I've heard, and Deputy Mayor Gardner has alluded to, I've heard people say it should be painted. I, I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when you know we can look at that further. The one thing I want to uh, compliment staff on is uh, the cost savings that we reached or we, we realized uh, by you know staff doing the work themselves, we got a new roof, uh, got the new ceiling in there, paid basically for the new ceiling. And I, you know, I think, uh, uh, kudos to staff and and our our workers and uh, for doing that job and doing it very good and uh, and Councillor Wells too for bringing it to his attention how that floor could be taken up and uh, and some of the cost savings that were then put back into that building. Uh, the only other thing I guess and uh, Jamie you've already looked in this I don't know if uh, have you talked to uh, the fire chief about that uh, other doorway. Uh, today we I met with uh, with uh, Fire Chief Cameron today this afternoon, uh, and we looked at the door and we will reverse the hinges. Um, it would need to be done, so we uh, I will have staff reverse the door hinges so it can open up the proper way, so we don't have a bottleneck at the monuments. Okay, thank you. I guess to uh, to from the rest of council, it was, this was something that was identified when we were doing the monument uh, there. It was identified that that was going to be maybe a problem, and uh, staff at the time were uh, made aware of it, but it hadn't been done. And uh, after the monument done is done, the door opens out towards the monument, and it, it causes a bottleneck. And I was afraid, uh, and as was the committee at the time, afraid it was going to be an issue as far as a possible fire hazard or uh, as far as getting out and. Uh, I asked the uh, staff to look into that. So I'm glad that that'll be a change. I don't think it's going to be expensive. I, I, I'm assuming you could just re hinge the thing. I don't know. But anyways, I'm glad to see that. So very well done. Council Wells, please. Uh, yeah, like I, uh, I agree with uh, my colleagues. Uh, most part, um, Deputy Mayor, we're a little older than you, like the, the wood is back in our days. I like the wood, but no, I was actually personally back there uh, and uh, uh, dealing with Dave and that and Jamie, the, the, the ceiling, the floor, everything looks tremendous. Uh, kudos out to the staff, did a great job. Um, yeah, and as far as painting the wood, We'll see down the road where that goes, but as far as we're moving on, and the the like council Mellon said the hall's getting uh, rejuvenated. So uh, no, nope. good work, Jamie. Thanks. Okay, and I'll I'll pass on my kudos to you and your staff. I know it's, uh, it was a big job. Had fortunately or unfortunately, we had the time to do it, and and uh, I know it's been. Uh, I wouldn't say a thorn, but something that councils in the past have wanted to do, and we finally got something done. Um, 
you need to get rid of that blue hard. Do it tomorrow. Um, as for the wood, you know, I I I agree that you know it, it's kind of dated and it's from the era of uh, Councillor Mellon and, and Councillor Wells in the old days, but. I've seen that stuff get painted up and it can look still pretty good. So um, I wouldn't dismiss that idea as of yet. Uh, if you do paint it, then at least let's, let us have a discussion at council and we can go from there. Okay, good, thank you very much. I just wanted to make sure that uh, we brought that forward. Um, next one I brought out was a key information report on the on the capital update. So staff sent us a, uh, a um, spreadsheet on all the capital items that we had approved and some of the ones that we had um, discussed about taking off. I didn't really have an issue with most of it. Uh, the challenge I had was I want to I want to see some dates on some of those empty holes. So um, I can leave that up to Shannon and staff to deal with that, but. Um, June starts in two weeks, and I think that some of those things are going to be in the fall. And I know we're having some challenges with um, getting things done, but things are opening up, and uh, everybody's going to want to get things done. And uh, I think it's an opportunity to start getting this stuff done, get the dates on them, get the work done. Once it's, as I always say, once the work is done, you can feel comfortable that it's done, and we can move on and see where things go. So that's that's. Um, the reason why I wanted to bring it up and make sure council was aware of what was going on. So any comments, Shannon? So we will update that uh, capital list because we did have, we do have some tenders that were issued last week that we can update, but I'll work with Sarah to make sure we get some uh, tight uh, dates on that for the next meeting. Yeah. Um, the, the ones in wastewater and water have no dates, no nothing. So, you know, those things just need to be done. I know we're all busy, but um just um time will fly by before you know it summer's here and then fall's here and we're all saying why wasn't it done so just giving you a heads up from my point of view so any we'll comments uh, bring it, uh, to our june 1st council meeting with the update okay any comments from council on that okay thank you next one is pool bylaw so uh i'll turn it over to deputy mayor no, sorry, Carmen House first. Sorry, Carmen House key information report. Wanted to bring that uh, forward. I think staff needs to explain a few things of what's going on there, and then we can go from there. So, who wants to? I think who wants to lead it on? Uh, if Danielle's there, she can lead it, and I can add in anything else. You're on mute, Danielle. Sorry about that. Uh, so in front of you is just uh, an update on where we are with the Carmen House. Um, so we've completed quite a few things on the Carmen House renovation from 2018 till now. Um, there are a few remaining items that we still need to complete uh, with the facility staff. So um, we need to install two fire rated doors and that was discussed uh, in council in 2019. Um, we need to reinstall the fire shutter that's located on the outside of the building. Uh, we need to do a little bit of electrical work inside Carmen House to make sure the fire shutter closes with the fire alarm and whatnot. Um, and then just do some, some pump line repair. And that was just due to where the stairs were um, put in. So we just had to relocate the sump pump line. Um, so that's pretty much what we need to do. We need to do a little bit of drywalling as well. But uh, I estimate that in the report, you'll see it says that it's we have until the fall is what I was estimating and we were just having some issues with COVID. Um, however, based on conversations, I think that the, maybe the mayor can speak to um, with the tenant, we may be able to move up that timeline significantly. Um, so if I, if anybody has any questions, I can answer them or. Uh... Hey, I appreciate your, uh, your comments on this, Danielle, you were kind of thrown into this fire uh, without knowing a lot of knowledge and it's been on our, it's been something we've been working on as council as long as we've been in it too. So um, 
We are in talks with the tenant and we're going to have a meeting uh, shortly to, to see how we can schedule the rest of the work. But my concern is that we need to try. We need to get this work done. And right now it would hold up the opening of a museum if that was even thought of. But uh, as of right now, that's not a, an issue. Um, if it was, we'd be. We'd be in a, in a bit of a bind. So any comments from council? Councilor Wells. Uh, yeah, uh, obviously I've been involved in the Carmen House right from the, since I got elected. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely want this done, Danielle, as quick as possible. Uh, I don't know the conversation you had with the tenant, with Mayor Bivos and that. Um, I, I know she's afraid of COVID bad, uh, just because I've talked to her, but anything that can be done like uh, electrical, anything in the Carmen house, like put it at your top of your list to get it done. We're at the point where I want this off my plate because I've I've dealt with it for a year and a half now. Um, just moving forward, just top your list to get the, this Carmen council meeting or whatever council meeting, I don't want to see this on here anymore. That's how much I'm done with it. Um, we have to respect uh, the tenant. If she's that afraid, uh, I'm sure uh, uh, Mayor Bivels, he knows the tenant well, and obviously uh, if he's talked to her, maybe uh, we can end. Uh, basically, the only thing we have to do there is put that uh, uh, Eastgate door in, and up there, and the rest pretty much is off her limits. Correct, Danielle, as far as... Uh, going into her apartment, maybe a little electrical or the fire shutter, which has to, which was, uh, I don't know how that got missed. Well, we do know how it got missed, but anyways, uh, uh, it can probably be maybe rectify that we can use it or rectify it that we can use it on the outside, which would save a lot of headaches because it is designed for the outside as a, to our conversation we had. So, um, yeah, other than that, just keep pushing this like forward, forward, forward. I just, I want it off the, I want it off the plate. Thanks. Council Mel, any comment? No, except I've been looking at this um, for two and a half years, probably. Uh, yeah, just somehow get her done, like, uh, you know, I know you're working the best you can with this uh, under the circumstances being brought in at the, you know, dropped into this uh, frying pan, Danielle. But if in any way at all we can move this forward to get it done within the next, I'd like to see it done within the next month or, or you know, ASAP. Council Lewis. This is a nightmare that just seems to not want to go away. I know with the COVID, it kind of knocked us off a little bit, but uh, I do believe there is some remaining jobs here that that most likely can be done ASAP. I just I just don't want this to lead on for another three to six months. Of it. It's just cause oh, it's it's come to the end for me. And that's all I have to say. I know I know Danielle, you're you're trying your best. But uh, I mean, it's, it's a nightmare. So uh, let's see what we can get done and let's get this off the books. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Gardner, please. Thanks, Mayor Bivelds. Yeah, Danielle, you, I don't know if you can sense the frustration around the table. Um, I uh, respect the fact that uh, you're fairly new to us now. You see, it feels like you've been here a while, but, uh, and this is a new file for you. So this is a much gentler uh, conversation uh, or statement by me uh, than it would have been had you been here for a full year. Uh, but this needs to get done and it needs to get done as soon as possible. The residents of South Dundas are absolutely exhausted uh, hearing about the Carmen House and, uh, you know, it, it just, it needs to get done. End of story. And the faster you can do it, the better. And then we're done. No, 
the COVID-19 situation is absolutely horrendous. Um, but, you know, I hate, I would hate to think that, you know, thank goodness we have COVID to, I don't want COVID-19 to be the excuse for this. I want it done. So, yeah, thank you. Okay, Shannon, just want to just rest assured, Council, that Danielle, Jamie, myself talk about the Garment House on a weekly basis. Um, we understand the urgency to get this done. Uh, this has been part of the file for two years. Uh, it's something that we definitely want to get done in the next couple of weeks if we can. And if we can get to, you know, work with the tenant on getting in there safely for our staff and for her, uh, we'll definitely target for the next couple of weeks to get this, uh, at least the building part of it done so that we can get the occupancy permit issued. Okay. So um, we are having a meeting with the tenant uh, late this week, and uh, we'll see if we can get this thing going. I wanted to make sure council was fully aware of what was going on, and, and and now Danielle knows our frustration, and it's it's been a bit challenging. And we're not blaming you, that's for sure. But I just wanted to make sure that uh, the people of South Dundas knew we still wanted to get this file done and dealt with. Okay. So next one, Deputy Mayor Gard. They're okay, Councillor Wells. Anything further? Uh, yes, Mayor Bibles. Just just in your meeting, uh, I, I would bring it up to the tenant that uh, if there's any issues about COVID or anything, we can actually build a plastic petition, like just easily inside, maybe four or five, six feet, because obviously everyone knows the stairs are. In there now, so you can actually petition off, seal it, that you're doing all the work from the outside, that you're not going in and out for a parking all the time. So there would be a like a plastic petition there, just like you would in an abatement situation. So it's sealed that you're entering the house from the outside, from the stairwell. And you go in, you do your work, and when the door is all installed, take the plastic down, that you're not constantly going back and forth through her house. And I, I think that's the step you, you should take when we start to do the egress door. Okay, we'll take that uh, suggestion in mind. Thank you. Um, now, Deputy Mayor Gardner, pool bylaw. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Mayor Bivels. Uh, there eventually. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Bivels. Um, yeah, this is just actually a simple request. Uh, I've uh, been speaking to some residents and actually. Uh, um, folks that have purchased, they're known as swim spas, and our bylaw right now doesn't speak to them. They're a, a fairly newer um, item that can be purchased. Uh, I believe, and lots of the residents believe, that they actually fall under the uh, a whirlpool tub or a hot tub uh, with the hard cover on top. Um, but our bylaw right now is uh, forcing folks to treat it like a pool. So I don't want to get in the murky waters of redoing the entire bylaw. I'm just wondering if it would be possible if we could speak to this new new product that isn't spoken to in the current bylaw and kind of add it in there with the uh, whirlpools. Okay, so um, just to let you know, I never want if we need to change a bylaw and do it right. That's not a problem. That's just the right thing to do. So Nicole. Uh, welcome back to to work. We appreciate it, and uh, let us know your uh, your point of view on this subject, please. Thanks, Mayor and Council. Um, I did some research, and just working in the different neighboring municipalities myself, I do know that the hot tub enclosure covers are covered under their bylaws. Some do have separate pool bylaws, and some include it under their zoning bylaw, like we do. Unfortunately, our current zoning bylaw does not have the exemption for those covers. So each pool or uh, under the definition of a pool in our bylaw covers any um, artificially enclosed body of water that's deeper than 610 millimeters, which is two feet. So that's basically your hot tub. Uh, I have seen those those spas as well. Um, so without rewriting our current zoning bylaw, which I believe we're in the process of doing now, we would just have to provide a, a, a separate bylaw exemption for the hot tub covers themselves. Okay. 
So would you uh, be willing to bring that back to council uh, as a as a report and as a separate bylaw in addition to what we currently have? Yeah, absolutely. We can do that for sure. Okay, Deputy Mayor Gardner, happy with that? Absolutely. I I don't know if in that bylaw, Nicole, would we how we just basically say anything with a hard cover? It's a world yeah, so, like do we speak? Uh, so essentially it has to be enough support. So if someone climbs onto the cover, they don't collapse it. Because okay. there's a drowning yep. concern, right? But yep. as long as it has a su sufficient support and can be lockable um, when not in use, then that's that's basically what's covered in all of the other municipalities. Perfect. That is Okay, so we'll, uh, so when you bring that back to council, we can have a, a debate on it. I think the key to this whole um, pool bylaw or, or, um, or uh, as you say, a, a water contained uh, vessel has to be safety, uh, safety of our residents, but safety, especially of our children that uh, tend to want to climb in things and nobody wants them in their backyard and stuff happening so cover works that's great no problem let's bring it back to council and we'll have a discussion and uh, go from there anything further from council on that um mayor bybells i guess it's just for clarification these swim pools uh, i think if i know what you're uh, referring to deputy mayor gardner um uh, are they any uh, are we talking structures below ground at ground level or above ground or both hot tubs you know or three four feet above Ground, I guess, if you will, you know, uh, these swim pools. Are we going to be distinguishing between, you know, anything at ground level that are built in the ground or anything that's above ground? Um, Mayor, if I can, they uh, basically the swim spas that I looked at, they're they're um, uh, a whirlpool on steroids, if you will. They're just bigger. They just do different things. They have, they still have the jets. They still have the seats and stuff but you can swim in them they tend to be more rectangular in shape but uh yeah you might want to consider getting one but they uh yeah they come with the cover very similar to uh a uh, hot tub um i i'm with you on safety uh mayor byvelds and but i think these are designed with that enclosure cover as part of it it's not an add-on it's actually part of the the physical pool if you will so yes it's it basically just think of that it's a hot tub on steroids i don't disagree deputy mayor gardner but uh all it takes is somebody not putting the cover back on and then you have yourself a hazard so i think um we're we got to make sure that they're done right and, and um Let's wait for Nicole's report and then we can have a further discussion if there's uh, if there's need to be. Would that be fair? Absolutely. Okay. And that's that's the end of that. We have no notices of motion, Madam Clerk. No. We have no closed session. No. Ratification bylaw then, please. Moved by Deputy Mayor Gardner, second by Councillor Lewis. The bylaw number 2020-40 being a bylaw to adopt, confirm, and ratify matters dealt with by resolution be read and passed in open council, signed and sealed. Call the vote, please. Mayor Bivelds? Yes. Deputy Mayor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Wells? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, before we ask for the adjournment uh, motion, I'd like to thank uh, Council for their work this evening. I'd like to thank staff for their valuable input. And I'd like to thank uh, all the audience out there on Facebook Live. Go ahead, Madam Clerk. Moved by Councillor Wells, second by Councillor Mellon, that Council now adjourn to meet again at the call of the chair. Vote, please. Yes. Deputy Mayor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Wells? Yes. Okay, and with that, it's carried. So this meeting is now adjourned. And uh, we'd like, again, thank everyone for participating and uh, have a good evening.